Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Prayer. Um, May the 6th, Wednesday. Uh, thank you for joining me this morning. And, and I want to remind you guys that the last day or two at the most to do the Mom Goggles video. And so look up Mom Goggles, create a scene, do that for us. It would be amazing to get it into Lizzie for us to use for Mother's Day. Very excited about what we've got planned for you for Mother's Day. So I hope you plan on joining us and inviting somebody for Sunday morning. Um, so this morning uh, is, let's see, it's Wednesday, right in the middle of week seven that I have been coming on every morning to do morning prayer. So uh, seven weeks now, every morning, uh, what my morning has looked like is 3.45, the alarm goes off, I get some coffee, sit on the couch, spend a good hour uh, with God and kind of reflect and say, God, what do you want me to talk about today? And read a few things here and open up my Bible and kind of have this time to process and, and what is it that God wants to share. So about 15 minutes ago, 15, 20 minutes ago, uh, my wife rolled over and said, uh, hey, honey, are you doing your thing this morning? And I came flying up out of the bed uh, in absolute panic uh, because uh I've got about 15 minutes till I need to be doing this with you right now. So I grabbed coffee and uh, ran around and I'm running this pace this morning, this craziness, feeling behind kind of thing. And it occurs to me, wow, I, I kind of forgot what this feels like. I, I kind of forgot this hectic check off the list pace the life uh, that I am so guilty of and uh, maybe you are as well. And, um, you know, the, the upside to what's gone over, gone on for the last several weeks is the fact that um, you've had more time maybe to think and reflect, you know, that we've had less distractions. We've had, you know, who wants to watch, you know, the 2016 lacrosse championship on ESPN? There's no sports to watch. Um, the shows are weird. The voice this week was weird with everybody quarantined and just wasn't quite the same. And so it just kind of seems like that um, life has slowed down a little bit or maybe even a lot of bit for some of us, which gives us time to reflect a little bit. Like I've forgotten this morning right now, I'm still kind of in this, my adrenaline's pumping. I'm, I, you know, I had, I'm just this kind of hectic driven striving feel that um, kind of forgot what it felt like, kind of forgot. And it, so it made me think, of um, man, how nice it has been uh, over the last several weeks to sit still and reflect, to sit still and hear God's voice, to sit still and not be in such a driven kind of mode, not be in the, the mode actually that I am right now, um, where I'm half awake trying to dive into what's next on the schedule to check off and, and all of those kind of things. And I was thinking about um, in the last few minutes, the, um, the reality of the hectic life that we normally live and the, the, the pace that we normally have. And often we do those things or we fill our schedule in that way. Um, or we always have the car radio on or, or we, you know, we, we've always got things that help us to keep from focusing on things that we need to focus on. In other words, uh, they're distractions. Uh, the, the reality of we put the distractions in our lives oftentimes because we don't want to face the things that we actually need to face. And uh, I wonder if you've come face to face with some things during this time period that you've had to slow down um, that you're actually having to address because you don't have anything else to distract you. You, you, you know, whether you're, you're, if you're not working like you were before and your schedule's different, um, if you just, uh, like I say, there's not the TV shows or there's not the different things and you've had to be still, then what happens is you may have come face to face with secret sin that you have not been addressing or uh, regrets or hurts or relational stuff. And so I just want to say to you, um, that's not a bad thing. 
I, I think that's maybe a good thing. I think every once in a while it's very, very healthy for us to come face to face with um, our struggles, our reality. On the day of Pentecost, um, if you remember, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, Peter gets up and preaches the sermon that is just, um, uh, man, it's, it's, it's amazing because he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And so he speaks truth and speaks the word of God. And there's one little verse um, that's Acts 2 and 37. And it says, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. When they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And so I don't know if maybe you um, have had the opportunity to slow down enough that you've come face to face with some realities. And it's not such a bad idea to sit still long enough to let it cut you to the heart. I, I know that in this time period, I have slowed down enough to go, wow, these are some unhealthy habits. This is some unhealthy thought patterns. This is an unhealthy behavior that now just gets accented because I don't have all the distractions um, that I had before uh, to keep me from those things. And, um, you know, it's, it's in, a, in, a, in a thing like that, in a, in, in a mode like that, that we can recognize that our greatest need is not a hectic lifestyle. It's not in the striving. It's not, you know, uh, bursting with enough distractions to keep us from ever thinking about failures or regrets or those kind of things, our greatest need is Jesus. Um, our greatest need is to um, sit at his feet, to not be the sister who's running around doing all the work at the house um, and getting all the preparations, but to be the one who is sitting there at his feet, uh, hanging on his every word. And um, so... Uh, weird how God uses, you know, moments like this morning. Like I say, I'm, I'm just now, as, as I'm talking to you, I'm just now settling down, if, if that makes sense to you. I'm, I'm just, because I, like I say, popped out of the bed and thought, oh my gosh, you know. Um, and so I want to encourage you, challenge you, uh, maybe both at the same time, that um, push into this downtime a little bit. And what I mean by that is uh, you may have found yourself thinking, well, I'm bored or I don't know what to do next or there's not much to do. And maybe just maybe God has given you an opportunity to face a couple of things that you need to face within your own heart. And I, wanna, I want to um, encourage you um, to take courage, encourage is with courage, to, to take courage in stepping into, okay, um, maybe I have a tendency to fill my life and fill my schedule with so many things because I'm avoiding things that I need to address within me. And so that we might sit still this morning in prayer and say, um, search me, God. Let me come face to face with relational struggles. Let me come face to face with uh, my own failures and regrets this morning. Uh, let me find myself where the people found themselves at Pentecost, where um, you kind of cut me to the heart. And let me face those things and understand that, that if I will turn back and say, I need you, Jesus. You're my greatest need. I, 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 Holy Spirit, I, I need you to address um, this crazy hectic pace that I have that is filled with things to distract me so I don't have to deal with what needs to be dealt with. Um, would you come into this moment when I've got time and I'm sitting still and would you bring some healing to my heart? Would you give me courage to do what you tell me to do? Maybe it's to pick up the phone call and apologize. Um, maybe it is to, to sit and, and to get in his word and for whatever reason I'm distracted, you know, there, our sinful nature, we've got time, but our first thought is to fill that time with something that is a distraction as opposed to pick up his word and say, speak to me today. I need to hear from you today. I need healing in you today. So let me just encourage you that during the downtime, um, 
sit still, sit still um, long enough to face the things that we need, we need to face, long enough to come to a, um, a, a place where we actually sit uh, long enough to, to hear his voice. And so let's be grateful for this time period that, that we don't, um, we don't just jump in the car and turn on the radio. We're not running off to get the kids to school and clean here and do this and do that. And don't get me wrong. I know some of you are still somewhat busy in the things that you're doing, but it's different. And I, and I do think there is more downtime. And so I just want to encourage you to lean in and encourage you. Um, I really hope to wake up tomorrow morning <laughs> and not, and not be back in that mode that I that I felt this morning, um, but maybe God, you know, that's that's in His sovereignty. He knows that and wants to uh, just remind me. You know, it's been like I say, seven weeks. My mornings have looked very very different than what they look like, what it's felt like and looked like this morning. And um, and so uh, lean into lean into the downtime, lean into the reality of facing what you may maybe God wants you to come face to face with. Maybe just maybe. Um, you know, everybody's talking about, man, 2020 is the worst year ever. Um, you got the back to the future memes where the doc tells him, you know, never set it to 2020. And we make all these jokes. But maybe for some of us, 2020 could be the year that we look back and go, you know what? When I was sitting there and I had all this downtime, I had so much time to address some things with God. I had so much time. And I can remember a moment in that where I pushed into that and maybe some healing came. Or I had so much downtime that I faced a relationship that I had not faced for years and God brought healing to it because I was bold enough to pick up the phone and apologize. And so lean into this downtime without as many distractions and and, and let's ask God to to do something um, that, that, that we would recognize uh, our need for him, that he is our greatest need. Our need is not the crazy schedule and the hectic striving that usually is reflective of our life. So let me pray for you this morning that um, that maybe you would kind of lean into uh, the downtime. For those of you that as I'm talking, you're already thinking of some secret sin, something that God has brought you face to face with. Um, maybe it's you're, you're dealing with a particular behavior. Um, let me, let me pray this. I'm going to pray this morning that you will sort of address that and or find some accountability. Maybe it's the reality of picking up the phone and going, man, this is what's going on. And um, I need some help um, in this particular area of my life. So let me let me pray for you as we use the downtime to reflect on um, whatever it is that God wants to say in each one of your hearts. So, Father, um this morning kind of stunk. <laughs> I, I realized that, you know, this crazy go, 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 hectic feeling, I, I kind of forgot what it was like. I, I, and, I, and I realized that I spend a lot of my life in this go, go, go mode, um, filling my schedule with distractions that often keep me from you or even from addressing um, things inside of my heart. And so we thank you for this time period that has made many of us sit still a little bit longer, deal with relationships a little bit more, um, in a lot of ways focus on things that were more important and healthier. And God, for those this morning that you're bringing up a secret sin, an issue within their life, uh, would you give them courage to address it this morning, to ask for help, to reach out to somebody? Uh, would you give them the, the, the courage to lean into you, Jesus, your Holy Spirit today, and say, Holy Spirit, please come in, help me change, do something different inside of me, um, heal my heart. For those that are sitting there and the distractions they fill their life with is because of broken relationships, shame, regret from the past. I pray for healing this morning in their heart. I pray for wisdom as to what's a healthy next step to overcoming. Um, and, and maybe it's that that apology email or phone call. Maybe it's that that, that um, action that they need to take, give them courage to take that next step, to do what it is. And so, God, we thank you for this time period that has made us slow down and reflect on who you are and um, 
Recognize that you are our greatest need, not all the stuff and the striving and the things that we um, fill our days with. So go before us today, God, that we might use the time that you've given us to draw into you and to recognize that you are our greatest need. We just pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys. Have a great day.